Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Dave and I would like to thank you for watching my video on my Frugal Foot YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to discuss athlete's foot. In medical terminology, this is called tinea pedis. Athlete's foot is a fungus. It's caused by some of the same organisms that can cause ringworm and it is contagious. It can be spread from one individual to the next and it can also be spread from one part of the body to another. It is an entity that should be treated. Some of the common signs and symptoms of athlete's foot include a red rash that usually presents itself either between the toes or along the bottom of the foot along the rim in what we often call a moccasin distribution. But athlete's foot can also present itself on the top of the foot as well. There's often itching and burning, but again, those symptoms do not have to present themselves for it to be athlete's foot. In fact, oftentimes, athlete's foot is confused with either a dermatitis or just dry skin. The treatment of athlete's foot has three key components. The first is you must have a proper diagnosis. If you're uncertain as to whether you have athlete's foot, you should see your own doctor, especially if you have any medical conditions that lower your immune system, such as diabetes. Second, you need to be treated with the right medication, and there are both prescription and over-the-counter athlete's foot medications. And third, you need to figure out what caused the athlete's foot and then eradicate the predisposing factor. All right, let's discuss some of the medications that are available for athlete's foot that are over the counter. Now, by no means is, are these products all inclusive. There are other products available. These are just the ones that I was able to find that, on, on Amazon. And I put a link to each of these products below in the description. So if you want to check them out, you can. So we're going to categorize these to two different groups. The first are going to be those that are fungistatic. And that means that they stop the reproduction of fungus. Here are the three that I actually have here. Uh, one is tenactin. The other is lotrimin. And the third one is the, the actual medication name is clotrimazole. There are some advantages and disadvantages to each of these. Um, the spray itself, I often find, is helpful for individuals that have a hard time reaching their feet. And this ensures compliance for me. I can, I can depend on my patient more so to actually spray their feet than to actually reach down and apply a cream. Um, I do like powders because they, they help to dry the foot. And so the Tenactin, this one here, has a powder spray. And I, I, you might be able to find the Lotrimin in a powder spray. The powder spray is such, it works in such a factor that when you spray it, it actually develops into a white powder on the skin. The third type is, is actually a cream. And Lotrimin and, and, and Tenactin are available in creams as well, whether you find them on Amazon or at your, at your drugstore. The nice thing about creams is that it's mechanical. And there is some argument as to whether these would work better because you're actually physically rubbing it in with your skin. I mean, sorry, with your fingers. You're rubbing it into the skin with your finger when you use a cream versus the spray. And so by rubbing it in, it penetrates the skin better and it works better. Um, now, when you're putting these on, it's really important that you wash your hands afterwards because, again, that fungus is contagious and you can get it onto your fingers. The second group is going to be fungicidal, and that means that it actually kills fungus. Lamisil cream actually falls into the fungicidal category. So that means that this product is designed to actually kill fungus. Now, when you look at the back of the box, it says cures most athlete's foot. It doesn't guarantee that it's going to necessarily eradicate the problem. And that holds true for, for all of these products because each one is a different chemical and different funguses respond differently to different chemicals. So you never know which one's actually going to work. The best thing that you can do is read the panel, read the directions and follow the directions. If the product is being, if, if the product says, hey, put this on twice a day, do it. If it says use it for two weeks, use it for two weeks. If it says use it for four weeks, use it for four weeks. If it doesn't get better, you need to follow up with your doctor to ensure that you have the proper diagnosis. We also need to discuss some of the predisposing factors for athlete's foot. Number one is feet get wet and they pretty much reside in a dark environment called your shoe. If you're not changing your shoes every day, you need to start doing that. Maybe wear a different shoe on day one and another shoe on day two and another shoe on day three to allow your shoe to dry. Change your socks 
frequently. Avoid cotton socks. Wear wool socks in the winter, a technical sock in the summer, and that will help to wick the moisture off of your foot and put it into your shoe. Wear very well ventilated shoes and avoid shoes that are not leather. These are all important things that you can do to help eradicate or at least prevent you know, athletes from developing. Another thing is make sure when you get out of the shower, dry in between your toes really, really well. Once your athlete's foot is gone, it's maybe not a bad idea to apply powder to your feet every day. Discuss this with your own doctor. Well, this has been a short video on athlete's foot and some of the conservative options and ideas that are available for treating it. If you learned something today, please give this video a thumbs up. You can also subscribe and go to the website frugalfoot.com. I'm Dr. Dave, and thanks for joining me.